In this mini tutorial we're going to think about the very basic structure of the spinal cord particularly with respect to the pathways which run through it and some of the reflex arcs which are found within it. So let's start off by drawing our cartoon diagram of the entire central nervous system. So here is the brain with the brain stem. This is the spinal cord and that's the cerebellum. And the cross section that we're going to do is in the transverse plane. So it's in the transverse plane in this plane here. And it looks something like this when we do a cross section in that plane. And the basic shape of the spinal cord in cross section, particularly of the grey matter inside, is an H. There's a cross section of the spinal cord, and we have an H shape in the grey matter there. So the grey matter is this stuff here, so that's the grey matter where cell bodies and synapses primarily are found. And the more peripheral stuff out here is the white matter. And the white matter is primarily composed of neuronal axons and their associated glial cells. Now, the spinal cord has around 30 or so individual segments. And for each of these segments, on both sides, there are two structures kind of plugging into the spinal cord, so to speak. On the dorsal aspect, there is the so-called dorsal root, and on the ventral aspect, there is the so-called ventral root. Now the dorsal root connects to the spinal cord and contains sensory axons. So the dorsal root is the major place where sensory information is entering the spinal cord. The ventral root emerges from the ventral aspect of the cord and contains primarily motor axons. So this is the main site from which motor innovation, motor information exits the cord. Now you'll notice that the dorsal and the ventral roots blend together to form a so-called spinal nerve. And the spinal nerve, there is a pair of them emerging from each segment of the spinal cord. And the spinal nerves are mixed nerves that is both sensory and motor. So let's first of all think back to our diagram which showed the flow of information in the nervous system. And we'll start off with um, a sensory structure, say for example the skin. Now the skin is very richly innervated by many millions of sensory neurons. These sensory neurons send their axons through the various spinal nerves into the spinal cord. So let's depict a sensory axon in green here. So in comes this sensory information into the spinal nerve. It goes through the dorsal root and it usually enters the grey matter of the dorsal part of the spinal cord. This is known as the dorsal horn. Now, this sensory neuron, whose axon has been depicted in green, is a neuron like any other, so it has a cell body like any other neuron. And it so happens that the cell body for this neuron sits in this swelling on the dorsal root, known as the dorsal root ganglion. So the swelling on the dorsal root is like that because it's filled with the cell bodies of sensory neurons. Let's add this green sensory neuron onto our overall diagram of the CNS. So in comes that sensory information, there is its cell body in the dorsal root ganglion, and it enters the spinal cord like this. And the information is flowing inwards towards the CNS in that direction. Now, something you need to realize about the various pathways in the central nervous system is that they 
are not composed of just one axon. They're actually frequently quite long chains of axons all connected together by synapses. So in this case, in our sensory system, this green sensory neuron actually synapses upon as a second neuron in the dorsal horn. And this second neuron in the dorsal horn then goes up towards the brain through the spinal cord. Some of these second neurons stay on the same side as the first neuron. Some of them actually cross the midline in a process known as decussation. But there's going to be an entire mini tutorial on decussation, so we don't need to cover it in this part. So let's draw the blue second neuron on our overall diagram. So here is our second neuron in the chain, and that goes all the way up until it gets to the cerebral hemisphere. But it stops deep in the cerebral hemisphere here, where it synapses on a third neuron. Synapses on this third neuron, which then projects up to the cerebral cortex. And it is at this point here where perception occurs, where we have the feeling of something. And we don't really know what happens in the cerebral cortex to give us this conscious perception. So you can see that for the sensory system, we have got a chain of three neurons. <clears throat> OK, now let's consider the motor system. Now, you're going to have more detailed lectures on the motor system from Dr. Publikova. But let's just draw a very simple example. In orange, I'm going to draw the cell body of a, a motor neuron there in the ventral horn of the grey matter of the spinal cord. So this is a motor neuron in the spinal cord, and this is the neuron that sends its axon out through the ventral root into the spinal nerve and ultimately to a muscle, say in one of the limbs. We can put this orange motor neuron on our diagram on the left. So here is our orange motor neuron here, which sends an impulse out towards a muscle, telling it what to do. But the obvious question is, well, what's telling the orange motor neuron what to do? And the answer, as we saw previously, is that there is another neuron in the chain. And this time I'm going to depict it in red. So there's another neuron which descends down from the brain and synapses upon this orange motor neuron. We can depict it here on the left-hand side. There's the cell body of this motor neuron. It sends its axon down through the cord, ultimately to synapse upon the orange motor neuron. So in the motor system, there is usually just a chain of two motor neurons. The red, so-called upper motor neuron, and the orange, so-called lower motor neuron. Now, what we've covered here so far are just the pathways for conscious sensation and conscious movement of muscles. But, as I'm sure you're aware, there are a number of behaviours which are completely unconscious. For example, reflexes. And reflexes are frequently um, mediated at the level of the spinal cord. So, if I were to depict another branch of the green first sensory neuron, another branch of it might go down and synapse directly on this orange motor neuron. And you notice that we've now formed a loop. So we've now formed a loop here, which is a so-called reflex arc. So if the green motor neuron is carrying information about, say, the degree of muscle stretch, if we stretch the muscle, we cause an involuntary contraction. And that's exactly what occurs when a clinician performs a patellar reflex when they take a tendon hammer, hit the patella tendon at the knee and cause the leg to extend. They're actually closing this reflex arc. 
I hope you've enjoyed this mini tutorial and please feel free to leave any feedback if you think appropriate.